football games as you do and do throughout the year. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players. You have a great organization, and you tell them one thing. Just win, baby. come up with that for him those were his phrases that he came up with that he believed in just win play hard try not to make mistakes but don't worry about mistakes because there's only one thing that counts just win Yo, welcome to the SC Raiders Talk and also the Raider Twan channel, another two for one nation podcast. I'm one of your hosts, SC Raiders Talk. Twan will join us in a little bit. And how do I sound? Because I'm not even joking. Literally, like five minutes before this show, my mic broke. <laughs> so I'm going to get a new one soon. <laughs> Probably by next live on Tuesday. But hopefully these earphones do not sound bad. So I just want to know, is everything good? Could you guys hear me good? Could you guys hear me good? Am I sounding good? There's no static, no nothing. I just want to make sure because <laughs> it was crazy the timing of this happening. Like it's, let me see if I could pop it up. Look, it's completely snap, bro. <laughs> it's snap, bro. It snapped. It literally snapped, bro. I'm so mad that it happened right before the show. But shout out to everybody, man. Sounds good? Okay, for sure, for sure. But sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Shout out to everybody that's in here so far, man. Blessings to you guys and your families. Welcome back to another 2 for 1 Nation podcast, man. Like I said, I'm one of your hosts, SC Raiders Talk. Talking all things Raiders and stuff like that. Let me give a shout out to who's here so far. Shout out to Raider Wait. What's good? What's good? SoCal Sal. Good to see you. Cool Kev in the building. What up, Cool Kev? True Raider, good to see you, man. Hope all is well. Daniel Barry Sports Highlights was good. Salute, salute. He said duct tape. <laughs> I know, right? Nah, even my old mic sounded bad, bro. Like, my old mic sounded like I'm in, like, an empty room and stuff like that. So I need to get a new mic. So new mic coming soon. It's going to sound better than the old one. And hopefully it sounds better than these earphones. Um, but... What's good, y'all? What's good? Good to see everybody that's in here so far, man. Hopefully, I don't skip anybody that's here um, already. Shout out to everybody here, man. And, of course, we got a few things to talk about. A lot to do with the draft, to be honest. It's all about the draft right now. There is some Raider news besides the actual draft itself, um, which, you know, uh, I, I believe Twan should be coming up soon. Like I said, shout out to Kevin Lurker. What's good, Kevin Lurker? Good to see you. Hope all is well. Uh, but let me get straight into it. You know, might as well. Um, let's go first with the with the news, right? Jordan Meredith comes back for one more year. Um, obviously, it's not a long-term solution. There's a reason why he only got one year. <laughs> so, um, therefore, most likely, he is going to come in as a depth piece behind um, – Behind the whole old line, pretty much, he could play both, but specifically the guard position. I don't think he starts um, unless something magically happens where we don't address the guard position and all these different things. And Jordan Meredith would obviously be a um, a in competition to start, right? But that's obviously one of them. It's more depth, more depth to the offensive line. I still think we're going to address the offensive line. I think we're going to get two more starters, in my opinion, on that right guard position, right tackle. Um, shout out to Milka Beasy. It was good, Milka Beasy. Good to see you. Hope all is well. Was good, was good. Good to see you. Uh, but obviously, 
he comes in as a depth piece at the end of the day. Um, so it's nothing too big, too small, nothing. Oh my God, out of out of the table, he's gonna start. None of that. So we got that obviously, and then uh, moving on to the more, I guess you could say, significant news on top of that, right? Is obviously Michael Penix, and now I believe to yesterday or today, I think today, it's been announced that Bo Nix will have a thir- top thirty visit with the Raiders tomorrow, as of Friday, April fifth. And then Michael Penix Jr. just had his top 30 visit. Two guys, in my opinion, that are not in the top 10. But really good quarterbacks. When you look at Bo Nix's play, he's got all the talent in the world to be a good player in the NFL. The problem is, is where is he going to land? How far is he going to drop? When is somebody going to take him, right? You know... We obviously got people like Jaden Daniels, right? We have Jaden Daniels, we have Caleb Williams, and uh, obviously Drake May, and we all know they're in the top five, top ten spectrum, top five easily, right? Somebody like Bo Nix is somebody that has been dropping up and down the board, right? Some people said top three, some people said top ten, some people said fifteen, somebody said even twenty, second round, some even said third round. He's one of the guys that keeps dropping and raising. The same thing happening with Michael Penix, but with Michael Penix, he's a guy that is a first-round talent, but his injuries causes him to drop. Now he's picking up steam again. He's picking up steam. So the question is, are the Raiders using these top 30 visits with these two quarterbacks as a place for the 13th spot? or to pick later on, or trade up into the late first round to get one of these quarterbacks. What do you guys think? For me personally, I think it's one of all of them. I think it's all of them. I think it's all of the above. I think it's also, hey, we're looking for a quarterback. What do you bring to the table? Let me see what you're about. And I think it's also like, hey, if we don't trade up and get our guy, we're going to pick one of you guys towards the end right towards the end of the late first or even possible 13 you could easily get one of these quarterback 13 but 13th is just a spot where i don't think you go for a quarterback right i don't think that 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 neither is 13th worthy right now on one spectrum i always said this since last i would say since practically the beginning of this year i said look Bo Nix to me is a second round guy. I always said this since you guys could go back to my lives to double check and all these things. Will he end up in the first round? Maybe, right? At the end of the day, whatever I say is not what the scouting departments in the NFL does, not what other people looking at tape, what they're going to say. But for me, I always said that, right? But I still think he is a talented player. That's no doubt, no question. Then you have Michael Penix which arguably was one of my favorite NFL draft quarterbacks prospects in the whole draft. I had him at number one at a certain time. But the obviously the injuries have caused him to drop. He had two torn ACLs, I believe. He also, as you can see, the most recent one in the national championship, he was playing with some hurt ribs. Right, He was getting smacked around. And he still went out there and played and kept getting hit. So who knows how bad them injuries are. But if there's one thing for sure, Michael Penix is one of those guys that never gives up. And he showed me that in the national championship. People don't really look at that national championship and be like, oh, he overthrew this guy. He did this. He didn't win. Yada, yada, yada. But in my opinion, a guy that goes out there is playing hurt and still making the throws shows me what kind of leader he is and also just in general a good great prospect right um but let me get to some of the comments shout shout out to true rate all of you slow down with bo next even pegs jr they're automatic riding the bench one year they are second round prospects not worth 13 and that's what i'm saying right the same thing you're saying true raider i'm the same way right these guys are gonna at the end of the day be behind 
be behind Aiden O'Connell and be behind Gardner Mitchell as much as we hate it, they're going to be behind. Doesn't mean they might not start. They might end up starting in the second half of the season. They might start in the third week. You, we don't know. But at the end of the day, these guys are going to learn no matter who we choose. Unless it's Jaden Daniels, and most likely Jaden Daniels will still be in competition. But I, I believe that if Jaden Daniels is the quarterback, most likely you will see a trend of competition between them three, and then Jaden Daniels might win the job, right? Because at the end of the day, Antonio Pierce is still being fair. He said it's Aiden O'Connell's job. It's Gardner Mitchell to push him, and it's also whoever comes after. Uh, but shout out to everybody, man. Penix going to be a first rounder. I think I'm starting to believe late first, man. I'm starting to believe that Mocha BZ. Uh, shout out to Brad Lavis. He says, I'm asking everyone in Raider Nation to please say a prayer for my mother. She's in the hospital with cancer. I hope and pray I'm able to watch another game with her. Well, first of all, Brad Labs, I appreciate you being here. And second of all, bro, prayers, always praying for all of you guys, but praying for you, man, and praying for her. Um, that she beats that and she beats cancer, man. Hey, praying for you, man. Keep your head up. And I always say this when uh, when everybody goes through a tough time, man. The more positive you put into your mindset and more positive in the air, more positive things will come to you, man. So think positive, man. Think that everything's going to be good and everything will be fine, man. Hey, you feel me? Prayers, prayers, though, man. Prayers, of course. Um, but shout out to My Two Cents. What's good, My Two Cents? What's good, Rate of Resistance? What's good? Press, good to see you. Hope all as well. Shout out to El Capitan Rafucho in the building. Was good. Good to see you. Egalitarian was good. Was good. Was good. Yeah, facts. Prayers up for Brad, man. Prayers up for Brad and his mother, man. Hopefully they get through that, man. Hopefully they get through that and she beats it, which I believe she will, man. But I appreciate you for being here, man. It, it takes a lot for you to be here, man. So I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. But you already know, man. We got your Raider Nation of family at the end of the day, man. But shout out to everybody coming in, man. Hope all as well. Twan should be joining me in just a bit. Just a bit. Just a bit. Um, what do you guys think, man, about Bo Nix and Michael Penix, man? Would you guys take them in the first round, second round? Would you guys take them at all? Or are you still on the Jaded Daniels? Which, actually, I don't know if you guys have seen um, have seen this video. And I'll be promoting it throughout the live. Give me a second. Let me get this. Let me get that. If you guys haven't yet watched my recent video, um, it's only two minutes. It's like two minutes and 30 seconds, two minutes and 40. It's nothing. Uh, I'm a mess. I tell you, thank God for the Raiders to keep my mind busy, man. You already know, man. I'm going to do everything I can to entertain you, man. Try to get your mind good. But, hey, keep your head up, bro. Keep your head up. Remember, tough time never lasts, but tough people do, man. And you already know Raider Nation is tough, man. I know you're tough. You got this, bro. But, yeah, so the recent video I just did, obviously, uh, just 2 minutes and 42 seconds to be exact. Um, I talked a little bit about trading up, the pros and cons, different things like that. At the end of the day, um, there's a lot of pros and cons to trading up. Obviously, you give up a farm for a quarterback, and if he doesn't pan out, then you look like the dumbest organization and dumbest people alive, right? At the end of the day, we know what Jaden Daniels could bring to the table. We also know what Caleb Williams could bring to the table. We also know what... Drake May, Michael Penix, Bo Nix. We know what all these guys could bring to the table. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't mean they're going to pan out, right? You know, a lot of these guys have high potentials. It's just, will they reach that potential? And for me, to reach that potential, and that goes for every draft prospect. Every draft prospect, there's a reason they're in the draft, and there's a reason why they're going to end up getting chosen. Is because they the every NFL team believes in these guys and these younger guys to continue getting better every year, continue to rise and continue to do all these things. So at the end of the day, um, nothing's guaranteed in the draft. But if there's one thing for sure, a con is giving up the farm for a guy that has potential and then he doesn't reach that potential. And you're looking like the 49ers in 2021 with Trey Lance giving three first rounders and he doesn't pan out. And then you trade him away for a fourth round. All right. And then there's a pro. And obviously I'll talk about it right now. Uh, let me bring in my other host. You feel me? You guys already know, man, the two for one nation podcast is not one for one nation, man. It's two for one. And at the end of the day, it's two brothers, not just one. And let me bring them on, man. The King of Brown Crackers, are you already know, man. And on top of that, 
you already know, man. He he's the, he's got all the slogans in the world. You already know. We've seen the same movie over again. Uh, hey, we're the leader of the congregation, man. My boy here, man. My partner in crime in the Two for One Nation podcast, man. My boy Raider Twan in the building. What's good, Twan? Hey, what's good? What's going on, man? What's good? How you how you doing, man? Hey, man. I I, I should be asking my laptop how it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the real question but hey I, i'm doing all right i'm doing all right i can't i can't complain blessings to everybody out there i, I feel that man i have to ask my mic if he's okay because it broke bro it snapped right before the live bro. i was trying to get it fixed so now i'm using earphones for now until i get until i get the new mic so that's that's great okay um, so but... that's why you sound like that okay yeah, that's why I sound different. I mean, I kind of, in my opinion, I think I sound better with the earphones than I did on that mic, bro. It, 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 it sounded like it, bro. Uh, but shout out to everybody, man. Uh, shout out to Raider. He says, I told you six, 14 out of 16 AFC quarterbacks were first rounders. Raiders ain't got first, and we did more than less. The playbook was stripped when McDaniels was canned. Our guard could do it. He's a two for two one guy. And that's the thing, right? McDaniels kind of screwed up the, the, the momentum and the script and the whole – how the Raiders were proceeding, but we're talking about um, Tuan. You want to jump on here? My, Michael Penix Jr. having a top 30 visit recently, and now it's been announced that Bo Nix will have his tomorrow. So what you feeling about these two guys, man? What you thinking? I mean, we, we have to use our, you know what I'm saying? We have to really use our, use our senses, right? Uh, and, and be, be real honest with what, what was going on with the draft. I think, I think, what 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 they're doing is looking at the options of what what can possibly be there and i think what can possibly be there at 13 is a bo nix and a michael Penix. whether whether it's at 13 or whether we trade back and they're still there or you know what i'm saying whether they're in the second or and they're still there we still have to, ha we still as an organization have to do our due diligence on who it is that we want in here at quarterback. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's, that's an important uh, piece to, um, you know, building out this roster and, you know, e even further, there's been some other guys that have got 30, 30 visits and, you know, I, I, I can, I can throw right back at, at the, you know, th throw back at the, the, uh, the chat, you know what I'm saying, for, for things they said at us, but you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that today. Um, but you know, I we have to use our we have to use our indicators, and I think Bo Nix is definitely a a look at and see what what what's really going on with him. But I think Michael Penix out of out of both of those, if you ask me who 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 I think um is more likely um the person that they're really looking at, I think they're looking at Michael Penix over, over, over Bo Nix. And that's just my personal opinion. I think so too, man. Um, shout out to everybody that's in here, man. And that's a fact. Gardner can't put up 24. I think people tend to forget about Gardner Minshew that, that last year he helped Michael Pittman have one of his best seasons. Literally. Mm. Um, not only that, also, I think, you know, I think everybody's really panicking. You know, not not everybody. I would say some I've been seeing in a lot of ways um, where people are saying kind of like, oh, wow, if we don't get a quarterback, we're going to suck and all these different things. I feel like no matter who's under center, I think this team is going to be better than last year. I think that's one thing for sure I could probably predict and give a clear prediction that we will be better than last year. Will that mean playoffs? Will that mean Super Bowl? No but I am guaranteeing a better season than last year. And if there's not a better season and I'm wrong, hey, I'll be the first one to come right here and be like, I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'm I wrong. I was wrong. I thought this team could have been better. They didn't, blah, 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 right? Um, but at the end of the day, I think no matter what side of the spectrum, and I keep continuing, and I'm going to continue to say it until the draft, no matter what the side of the spectrum you are in, the trade up the farm or trade back, or or get a quarterback in the second round. I think nobody's wrong because at the end of the day, you still have a team that is getting built under our eyes. That D tackle alone we got already made our defense better, and we're still building on that, right? And then the offense, there's that Jordan Meredith stuff, right? There's that Jordan Meredith stuff that I just talked about, which I'll get your insight on that too. Um, 
but I believe they're still going to build the O-line. And there's still some key free agents out there that I think we're going to make moves post-June 1st because of the 20 mil. But let me give a shout-out to the comments, and then I'll get your take on Jordan Meredith and stuff like that. Um, shout-out to everybody coming in. Uh, let me see. Shout-out to Brad Laps in here, man. I think this draft and preseason is the most I've been excited for in over a decade. That's a fact. I think this is the most I've been excited about a draft, bro. Um, did he just eat a small steering wheel? It's a brown cracker. <laughs> you feel me? Shout out to Steve Jones in the building, man. You already know what it is. Shout out to Wild Turkey. Let's go, Wild Turkey. Raider. <laughs> Shout out to Raider Transplant. Good to see you, Angelo. Good to see you, man. Hope all as well. I can't wait for the next game, man. I can't wait for the for Raiders, for Raiders to start, man, playing out there on the field. Um, but shout out to everybody, Wild Turkey, everybody coming in, man. Um, suffered through Phil Sims' interview with Bo Nix actually made me dislike him more. Bo Nix likes fire and desire. I haven't seen Phil Sims' interview yet. I, I, I might go look at it um, and stuff like that. But shout out to everybody coming in. Uh, but talk to me a little bit about uh, Jordan Meredith real quick, uh, Twan. I know it's not a big signing, but let me know your insight on that. I think Jordan Meredith is a, is a big signing. Signing mm. and, and 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 hear me out on this. It, we have to have we have to have people that we can rely on. Okay. If if our starter goes down now, Meredith has shown us that when he goes in, he can get the job done. When 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 his number is called, you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying that he's a sure clear cut starter, but we need some. We that's and I think a lot a lot of people fail to forget. Most of these teams, what makes them really good is not really even their starters. It's the guys that they have at depth. Because when you get to week 16, week 17, you're going to have to rely on a Meredith. You know what I'm saying? At some point, you're going to have to rely on a, on a, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just going based off the roster we have right now, currently. You're going to have to rely on a Masterson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At at some point, week 15, week, week 16, you're gonna have to rely on rely on those guys. So if you have a guy like Meredith that you can bring in and know he's not we're we're not gonna take a nosedive <laughs> when he goes in, it's a good sighting. And I and again, I think signing him for you know, I, I, I don't know the, the full dollar amount, but I'm just believing that it's not something astronomically high. I think pretty much we just got re, re signed him for some pennies. Hey, cool. Cool. Especially knowing that our, our offensive line is what needs help. Some people hate that. I said that and here I go <laughs> on my soapbox, but there was people bashing me talking about when I can continue to talk about this O line, but surprise, guess what they keep bringing into <laughs> bringing in and re-signing. What, what are they bringing into these top thirties outside of quarterbacks? Offensive linemen. So obviously they feel like there's, they need to fix offensive line. So, you know, I'm cool with Meredith being here. I think Meredith, like I said, if his name, if his number gets called, you know what I'm saying, to 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 give somebody a break or whatever the situation may be, I'm I'm not panicking. So I I, I like it. Facts. And uh, I'm seeing right here, I uh, still need to save money for next year. Got to pay Spillane, Hobbs, Trayvon, uh, Jack Jones, and Koontz in the near future. I feel like they will be. I think they're able to bring all those guys back and still add on to the team right now. I truly believe that because when you really look at the money coming in, right, we still have over $15 million right now alone already before the June 1st stuff, right? After June 1st is 20, 22 plus million going into the bank. So that's extra plus the salary cap going higher next year, plus all the sales Vegas is doing. And all the events, people don't know this, but the events that the Raiders host, the Allegiant Stadium, is going to bring in money to the team. I don't know if people know that. It brings not not a big portion of the money, right? But like a, at least a small percentage, and even a small percentage is a lot when you're doing a lot in Allegiant Stadium. And let me tell you a few things that are happening in Allegiant Stadium that's going to help us, right? Concerts, obviously. All these concerts are coming, all these Taylor Swift, stuff like that, all that stuff, whatever the case may be, whatever concert happens, happens there. On top of that, there's new sports coming to Vegas. Now, I bring this up, right, because this is like a huge sport. I think 
internationally, I would say, outside of America right now, and they're trying to bring it to America. And it's one of the most recent news. And I know a lot of people don't follow it. I follow it because of my girl. She's a big rugby fan and stuff like that. The NRL, which is a rugby league in Australia, obviously, is bringing their their games back. And this time they're adding an extra game or two, I think, to the mix, to Allegiant Stadium, which is going to bring even more money into our pockets. So, again, you feel me? All these different things are coming are coming up that's going to help out the Raiders they're going to help in that money situation on top of that sales sales finances the stuff around the the hotels working hand in hand the food the all that stuff and especially with Antonio Pierce bringing back the what it means to be a Raider I feel like the stands will be filled with Raider fans this year man and I'm hoping for that right I can't guarantee it cuz the past few years have been bad but I will say that the Raiders will earn more money next year. And that's a fact. And that's going to help us, right? And I still think we could bring those guys and bring those things. You think we could sign all these guys back and have money extra or what? I, I'm not banking on it. Okay. I, I, I think what I – and we all have different perspectives, right? We need to get to a place where the money's not even a factor. You know what I'm saying? And right now, we just every every you know it, it's it's great that we're making that money. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a time when this organization wasn't <laughs> wasn't where we're at. You know what I'm saying? And and to be honest with you, it 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 just was like yesterday that we were able to. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying yesterday, like not too long ago, that we were able to kind of get out of that that hole. So to get out of that hole. You know what I'm saying? Where now Mark Davis is in a position where, you know, if a, if a big fish comes along, he could throw a little extra, you know, pesos his way. You know what I'm saying? It, that That's cool and everything. But we need to be able to stack all of that and have that just just chilling if, if we can have, you know what I'm saying? Of course, there's, there's rules and regulations. You got to spend X amount. Like, I understand that part of it. But have, having money... We 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 can't be in a position where we're we're almost like what we do on a daily basis, living check to check. You know what I'm saying? And if we can get our organization to that state of where a hey, we got big fish in here and they're all taken care of. Re- hey, remember Devontae Adams' uh, contract is, is high is high up there too. So when you start factoring all those names you listed on top of the guys that we currently have, that money kind of looks a little different. So I'm not, that's, that's something that, that is, is a longer discussion in which those guys, I think some of the, those guys definitely, we, we can live, um, we can't live without. And then there's some guys that's, that it's going to hurt for them to go. And we're gonna have to play ball in regards to 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 the dollar amount. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I I'm not I'm not I'm not for all of our money. You know, we just got a whole bunch of money that came in. I'm not I'm not I'm not for letting all that money go back out. You know what I'm saying? We we need to save a little bit of that for again rainy days. What happens if you know a player goes down? A, a key player goes down. And we're 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 on the brink of the playoffs where, you know, we need that player to take us over the top to get us into, you know, really making noise, in, you know, for the playoffs and possibly the Super Bowl. And we ain't got money because we we spent it all on like we need to get <laughs> stack it a little more before we really go on that that shopping spree. So I just uh, I just counted how many uh, people that have expiring contracts next year. And, uh, you know, you guys could double check for me. Maybe I counted wrong. But around 38 players have expiring contracts next year. 38, not just the five you named right there. 38. And I'm not even joking. And if I am wrong, it's like 37 or 39. But it's 38 the way I counted right now. So, 
I'll I'll be breaking I'll be breaking that down in in <laughs> in what? my in my live. I've been waiting on that because again <laughs> that that no I, I I don't know the exact number like you said mm. like right now off, off the top of my head, but it's like pretty much everybody you think that we're relying on this year is going to be gone contractually, whether next year or the year after that. It's like this year. I mean, 2005 or 2000, uh, I mean, t- 25 or 26 mm-hmm. is when all those key guys are going to be up out of here. And we're going to have to figure out what we're going to do, whether it's fork out that money, which, again, we ain't got all the money in the world to bring them yeah. all here, or we got to go draft. And a lot of mm-hmm. people are out there, and, and here goes people hating Twan. I might lose some subscribers with the, about this, but this, these are the facts. You got to do it in the draft. The only way that we're going to be able to replenish some of these guys, replenish some of these starters, is if we get some of those players in the draft. If we, if, 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 who, wait, Spillane, if, if, if we don't get a linebacker, (laughs) we're going to have to pay for it. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah. If we don't, if we don't, if we don't get a, 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 a corner opposite, uh, establish what, um, I mean, uh, Edge player outside of Max Crosby, opposite of Max Crosby, because Coons might be on his way out. Because Coons might say, "Hey, I love the Raiders, but hey, I love the bag." What's next? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I, I, I those, those that are really extreme on F the picks, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. But <laughs> for for that reason, so. Shout out to Gord Peterson in the video. It was good, Gord. Good to see you, Hope Balls. But Montana Fox, no. People don't know this, but the, the Stefan Diggs trade, everybody's like, damn, they got a good right receiver. He's on a one-year deal. Uh, he's gone next year. He's a free agent next year, so that means he, they got to pay him big, uh, which the Texans obviously have so much money that they could easily pay him and still build their team because they drafted well. <laughs> they built it for years through the draft once again. And they have all this extra money lying there. I think they're in top five right now in, in top, money. The Texans? Yeah. Yeah. The, again, how many how many years? Think about that. How many years has the Texans been in, in the top ten in regards to drafting? So you know all those years they've been drafting. And they're in a position where they do have their starting quarterback and their team is <laughs> – obviously good so they can take a and hear me out on this it is a risk Stefan Diggs is a risk if you guys don't know Stefan Diggs outside of him just being a flashy player and and a good player per Mm. se there's been issues with him with locker rooms so when you have a team that's stuck when when you have a team that's I don't want to say stacked but a team that's fairly built like the Texans Sometimes you can take that flyer and risk that, hey, if Stefan Diggs kind of acts okay over here and plays okay, it's going to work out for us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that that that's the risk of Stefan Diggs. And there's some guys out there, That's what, and that's another reason why there's some guys that are out there, names out there. And you're, some of you guys may be wondering why he's not getting picked up or why he's not, you know, um, getting added to a team. And some some of that stuff is because of not how they play on the field, but how they're playing in the locker room. Shout out to uh, Circus Raider. What's good, Circus? I remember most of our money went to out of shape and old vets that never produced. Nice to see our money actually going to players that look like they're going to produce. And that's a fact. I mean, I think that's why we haven't signed anybody else besides the Jordan Merritt that reached that sign. Because Antonio Pierce, Tom Telesco, and all these guys are really going one by one talking to these players, seeing what they're capable, even free agents. Hey, what do you bring to the table? What do you think a Raider is? What would you do as a Raider? What all the, all these questions, right? And if they don't check every single box, they're gone. Kind of like the Tredavious White. He came in, it didn't look well, and then he signed somewhere else. To them, he just didn't fit what what they're trying to build here, and they're trying to build the Raider way, and the Raider way is very slim. He said it before; it's very thin on the amount of players that fit into them categories. And right now, 
with these 38 players, whatever, most of them are practice squad, but most of, some of them are some big names like Koontz and stuff like that, are obviously going to have to have a heck of a season if they want to prove themselves to us and prove themselves in general. Um, I do think some of them are going to get it, let go, but I do think that the most notable ones will stay, um, majority of them, if they have a consistent season. And I see shout out to Montana Fox, though. What's good, Montana Fox Circus? Good to see you guys. Uh, shout out to hopefully I didn't skip anybody. I don't think it skips in my two cents. Was good. He says, So then trade Kuntz already. He's an ascending player, great value for him on the draft weekend. Tyree ready for real. I don't think Tyree. Here's the thing with Tyree. I think he's getting there. I think he's getting there. I think this year he might bloom. You know, um, especially having that workout with um, Max Crosby, um, also Wilkins obviously coming in and helping him with that veteran aspect of things. And Tyree kind of talked about it on Max Crosby's podcast saying, hey, Max Crosby is hard on me, but hey, I know that's 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 tough criticism and I'm, I'm using it to continue to play better. I'm um, coming in, and I know that there's so much pressure on me because I was picked in the top 10. Um, but I'm coming in every day, especially this offseason, putting in the work and all these things. So I do think he's going to take the next level. Um, the thing is here is that I think Koontz screams a Raider. And why I say that is because Koontz never really had the opportunity to show himself with the old regime. The moment Antonio Pierce came, he gave him all the confidence. And Koontz kind of talked about it saying, hey, I felt like myself. I, I I felt like I could have fun. I felt like I could come out here, perform, and I, I get talked about nicely and stuff like that. And you see that like with every player, and that makes me feel that Koontz is one of those guys that is not. He is gonna ask for money because obviously you gotta pay them bills, pay pay uh, your family and stuff like that. But I do think he's one of those players that is gonna resign and still perform at a high level because he wants to be here in an atmosphere like here and, and, and a place like here. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I hope that's what it is. I think yeah. is definitely going to play ball because this is going to be his first time. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we have, let's, let's be honest with this. We, I, I talk about cheap labor, right? Koontz has been under cheap labor this whole time. So you're telling me that he, you know, you're, you're telling me a guy that's been in cheap labor all these years, He's not going to try to ask for the bag, you know what I'm saying? And he's going to do that. Definitely, he's going to ask for the bag in regards to the Raiders. But that, and I guarantee you, it, you know, he's he's going to see what 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 uh you know. I'm just throwing names out there. What 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 the Jaguars are going to talk about? He's going to go see what you know who Tampa Bay is 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 talking about in regards to you know what I'm saying. He's going to eat the steak, and you know. See what see what they're talking about dollar amount. You know what I'm saying? The same thing with Josh Jacobs and same thing with with Zamir White. I think Josh Jacobs and Z I mean not Zamir White but uh Amir. You know what I'm saying? I think I think Josh Jacobs and Amir they both wanted to be a Raider, but the opportunities that were on out on the outside were better, and you can't be mad at it. Josh Jacobs went to get a bigger bag than he than than he was going to get here. Uh, uh, Amir went to go get a bag and an opportunity to start over with the team that he was at. So I, I think, I think Koontz is going to be looking for the same thing. Steph, I think he's good right here, but he's a prime Donna. There's a reason why the bills traded him. Yeah. I heard there's a lot of talks about locker room, um, a little bit of a locker room toxicity. Uh, if you like to say it. <laughs> Um, you know, whatever happens, happens, but you know, Stroud and him are gonna have themselves a little bit of a field day, probably. Well, that's what they're expecting, right? Um, we, we only time will tell, right? Um, Tyree isn't ready as a DN, he's better as a DT, and that's why I said put him in the inside, bro. I said it before him with the stunts and in the inside has always been the key piece in his game. Um, and obviously, I think he's developing in that sense. Um, now with Max Crosby and, like I said, Christian coming in and helping him and Antonio Pierce letting him breathe, <laughs> he's good. He's ready to go in developing. Not ready to go as a starter, but ready to go in developing. And he's starting to develop little by little, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
a shout out to everybody, man. And we're not expecting them to come out here and give me 12 sacks next season. I'm expecting them to take the next jump, take the next step forward. And I believe he could do that, right? Um, Tyree? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to, you know, I think I think a fair, uh, 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 you know, assessment in regards to, you know, this year with, with the pieces that we have, he just needs to be a piece of the puzzle. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If, if 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 there's a sack, you know, uh, so, uh, a few times this year, we need to say, "Hey, Tyree, you know what I'm saying? Set up Coons. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or or whatever the situation was, there was something that that he did to contribute to the result. You know, and 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 and, and be okay with that because I think he is going to bounce between defensive end and D D tackle. You know what I'm saying? And and Right, you know, right now he's getting a little brothered, if you guys know what I mean by that. You know, what I'm saying he's being little brothered by Max and 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 the other elite pass rushers we have on the team, and 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 it seems like he's, you know, that I've been seeing and hearing that he's been taking it with stride. Yeah, and um, shout out to everybody coming in. Kuntz only balled out uh because he knows it's contract talks. Here's the thing, right? I don't think it's because of the contract talks. I do feel like every player in their back of their mindset is thinking about their next contract, thinking about money at the end of the day, um, you know, because money runs the world nowadays, man. That's that's how the reality we live in. And, uh, you know, every, everything, the cost of living, everything is getting higher, stuff like that. But besides that, um, I do think that he never got the true chance to show himself. And I said this years ago. Uh, when he first got drafted, I said he didn't get that much play time. And then the times he did get play time, he got a sack. And some some were kind of criticizing him. Oh, he only got it because it was already the the end time of of the game. It was already the finish. It was already done. But I was like, bro, this guy got potential. You know, we shouldn't just let go of a guy like that. He got better and he played better. And now when he got that when he got that opportunity, he hey he established himself. And um, you know, at the end of the day, we could only ask for guys when they get the play time to show us some like that's their chance to be like hey i'm gonna come out here i'm gonna play and then when i'm on the field i'm gonna I'm play at a high level and i'm gonna show you that i'm not a horrible player and they gave him a chance and he did good um will he be consistent i don't know go ahead i think and, and i and i agree with both of you guys i think i think he he does realize hey this is the time i need to ball out this is the time i need to make my you know make my money for you know to, to push the envelope to get the bag, but also at the same time, when you look at the people that were uh, ahead of him on that, when you look at the depth roster of the people that were ahead of him and the people that were before him, a lot of those guys were people that we paid a whole lot of money to be here, a la Chandler Jones or somebody that we drafted in the first round. Tyree Wilson, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of people that were ahead of him in regards to, you know what I'm saying, the roster of value, you know what I'm saying, or that they valued. And, and when he, like like my brother said, when he got that opportunity, he said, I'm not <laughs> – I'm not giving it up for nobody. And that's why now we're looking at, you know, Koontz really being that guy opposite of Max Crosby. You know what I'm saying? Because he's he's shown us, he's shown us little glimpses, but when he got the full-time gig, you can really see that he's that he was really getting it done. And there's still room for improvement yeah. in, in, in regards to Koontz, but I, I, I like what I see. And for yeah. me, I would love to see something come, come behind him, you know what I'm saying? Just to fill out that, that edge edge position. Facts. And um, I think it comes down to leverage. Some you're going to see a lot of that, especially in, in the upcoming draft, they're going to pick players that are going to give us leverage in contract talks later. And I said this, and I forgot to even mention it when it happened to Josh Jacobs. I said this was Zamir White got drafted. Y'all could go back to that live specific. <laughs> I said, and people called me crazy. I was like, when they chose Zamir White, this was to give us leverage when it came down to Josh Jacobs and contract talks. That if Josh Jacobs, no matter what all our, our take on Zamir White is, no matter if we hate him, we love him. We don't think he's good. We don't think he's Josh Jacobs. We don't think this, or we do think this. I always said Zamir White was always the leverage guy when, obviously, the, uh, how do I say it? 
when Josh Jacobs came to contract talks, the Raiders would use it as leverage, like, hey, we got a rookie. We're not saying this rookie's better than you, but we are saying that we got some younger guys that we know have potential. So we don't need you to be the hero that you want to get paid like. Because if you guys remember, you guys go down to the interview he had at the Super Bowl weekend two years ago. Josh Jacobs talked about how if you want me to be the hero, pay me like the hero. Well, sorry to break it to you, Josh Jacobs. We don't need you to be the hero no more. That's just the reality of the team. And that's just the direction we're going in. And what happened? He's a Green Bay Packer now. He's gone. Out the window. At the end of the day, it comes down to the Raiders are building stuff underneath our noses and underneath practically all of us. And we're seeing it slowly by the guys they're bringing in. And now this draft is going to be really telling in the direction of all these 38 players that are going to be in contract talks. What happened? There's only three players that are safe on this team. (laughs) Matt Crosby. Daniel Carlson and AJ AJ Cole. Cole. (laughs) That is it. Everybody else on the team, everybody's a suspect. You know what I'm saying? And there's gonna be competition. If if you if you think you're you're drinking, you know what I'm saying, a a lemonade with tea or whatever your little chilling drink is, trust me, wait, wait till the draft comes. There's gonna be somebody that's gonna be knocking on your door, wait, waiting for your coming for your job. And that's what we're trying to build here. That's exactly what yeah. we're trying to build here. So I, I agree with you. And I, and I felt the same way. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I saw, you know what I'm saying, started when Zeus got, got picked up and I and I looked at his, you know, I actually dived into his highlights and stuff. I was like, he looks too much like, <laughs> he looks too much like Josh Jacobs to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, in certain aspects, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, the, and, and that's what it was, was they were building for, for what was to come. And mm-hmm. we're starting to see that not saying that mm-hmm. Zeus is, you know, going to be just like Josh Jacobs, but obviously he was enough for us to move forward. Facts and shout out to Chappy boss. You look new here, man. Hey, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button for the both of us here. Mel greatly appreciate mortgage in the farm for JD is not logical. Or Oregon State offensive line to lease Fuaga to beef up the offensive line. Add in Michigan running back Blake Quorum and Bo Nix in the second round sounds more logical. And obviously, I would not be mad at that, right? I've been a, a one of the main advocates in the Raider content world of Talese Fuaga. This guy is a dog, and he will be your future right tackle where we've been having problems over and over again. And a good offensive line makes a good co- a quarterback have time in order for him to make throws. Makes his job easier. You know who else's jobs that were on on that spectrum? Who else's job he they make easier? The offensive line, the running back position, the running backs, good offensive line, good holes, good gaps, good run plays. Simple. The trenches are important, and I'm gonna continue to say it. And it kind of shows you um, that kind of like what Twan said, nobody's safe. You know, at the end of the day, you could kind of see how people are. Um, when they leave a team as well and kind of like true Raider said there and that's something I really never talked about because it's like you know I don't want to get into that whole you know like oh my god I'm not categorized as a fan that just talks too much and talks too much trash about players wow you didn't say this before at the end of the day I always gave praise to Josh Jacobs bro I always did and 100% always did but at the end of the day the way he left was kind of crazy to me just in, to put it into perspective, you feel me? Renfro thanked us, said thank this, thank that. You know, I'm not expecting a whole 50 minute speech on thanking the Raiders, but I'm saying, hey, we drafted you. The least you could do would be like, hey, thank you for the opportunity. Now I got a new chapter. Instead, you said the fans were delusional pretty much and stuff like that. And people don't know what they're saying. And it's like, bro, come on. It kind of shows why you're out the building. Like, it's stuff like that that the Raiders are now building, right? Shout out to Natural Born Raider, Dirty Raider in the building. It was good, Dirty. Good to see you. Shout out to everybody coming in, man. Tom Telesco loves Notre Dame and Oregon players. I trust he's doing some clever cooking. He's cooking, man. I said that something's brewing. Shout out to Alfredo in the building. Was good. While Turkey, um, shout out to everybody coming in. Jack Kenna, which, speaking of Jack Kenna and speaking of Tuan, 
I just want to say, if you guys didn't see my IG story, I was at the Dodger game yesterday. And just, I, I don't have my broom, but we swept them giants. Uh, that's all I got to say, right? That's all I got to say. I was, I was waiting like, on it. I was, I was, I was at the game yesterday. It. it was good. It was good. Shout out to Shoei Otani. Showtime. Got to see his first home run as a Dodger. That was good to see. But shout out to all the giant fans out there, man. You're down bad. Just so you know, you're down bad, bro. You're down bad. <laughs> You're waiting on it. You're waiting on talk. I was waiting on it. Jack Kenner reminded me. Just every time I see Jack Kenner, it reminds me of the Giants, bro. It reminds see, Jack Kenner like... came on this show. You should have waited another week, Jack. <laughs> I was waiting. I was just waiting. Thank, thanks for coming in, dog. Hit the like button. I know. Shout out to Jack Kenner and the ability, man. You already know it's all love, man. Shout out to you, man. And as he was waiting for Jack to show up, I was. I was like, you know, you already know what it is. But shout out to the Lakers too, man. Make that run, man. You already know. Try try to make that run over there, man. Shout out to LeBron. Uh, I like a steam from running back from Notre Dame in late third, early fourth round. Absolutely reminds me of JJ. And that's the thing. We're still going to draft a running back. And speaking of that, Tuan, what you think? We're going to draft a running back second round, first round, third round, fourth, fifth round, if you were to give a prediction. And if there's a player in mind that you have in mind that you like personally. I would say okay. we need to get somebody in like the fourth, fifth round. Okay. Um, I don't see us getting running back high because it's not really like a dire need. You get what I'm saying? Like, it, and, and that's why, like, when you were talking about first or second, I'm thinking, okay. Maybe offensive line is a definitely a need at in the first round. Maybe cornerback is a, a need at first round. You know what I'm saying? Second round, you know, quarterback, you know, quarterback, first round, maybe quarterback, you know what I'm saying? Um, but running back, I see that being a fourth or fifth round situation. Okay. I like um Bucky Irving. Mm, okay. I like I, I really do like him. Um, there was a guy that I saw, I forgot what his name was. I got a, what school was it? It, 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 it loses my mind, but there's actually in, in the, in the, in the mid rounds, there's still going to be some good running backs there. Um, you know, Marshawn Lloyd still might be there USC, just, just yeah. as a name to, to throw out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like Trey Benson, but I think Trey Benson is going to be gone by then. He might be, yeah. Yeah. I, I really if, if, if you if the world was mine and you asked me what running back I would want out of this draft, I would want Trey Benson. Okay. But I okay. I not not for, you know, I think we have some other <laughs> needs, you know what I'm saying? Um to address um up so that's why I said in the later rounds. Speaking of offense, you think a wide receiver would be chosen by the Raiders this year? I think so. I think so because I I think because we we don't have DeAndre Carter, I think Tucker's yeah. gonna have to take over for you know for for you know punt return kick return situation and to have him do punt return kick return and then be our, our slot right receiver. Or our third wide receiver, it, that's a lot to put on a guy. So we're gonna need somebody to whether whether it is whether it's a flip, whether it's you know Tucker actually is our guy on the field, and we bring in a guy for special team. You know what I'm saying? Or you know Tucker is our special team guy, you know specialist, and then we'll have somebody you know be our 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 number three. I, I think shout out to Ray Love in the building. What up, Ray Love? Was good. Good to see you. Hope all as well. Shout out to everybody. Vargas hit his second home run too. That's a fact. Um, you know, as, as far as receivers, I think we'll choose one too. You know, I don't got any favorites. Oh wait, wait what, what was that? What was that? Oh my bad, my bad. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> that popped out of nowhere. But I don't have favorites. But I will say there is a couple receivers out there that I've, I've been, I've been, I've been liking a lot on film wise. Um, you know, some names in particular. You feel me? 
which obviously this guy's a first rounder, but he's he's a guy that I've always had praise for. Romeo Dunze from Washington's one of those guys. Um, besides that, obviously, what you guys just seen on your screen, you know, you guys didn't see I did it quickly, you know. Jerry Rice's son over there, pretty much. Brandon Rice from USC, man. You know, later rounds, he's not a day one guy. It won't let you feel me. That's somebody that could come. But in. you ain't got no favorites. I don't got no favorites, but I don't got no favorites. You know, I'm just, I'm just throwing that name out there. You know, I'm just throwing that name right. out there. Uh, but I got a couple others that I, that I uh, on my list, man. Devontae's Walker. I don't know if you guys have seen him uh, from uh, North Carolina. I like him. A guy that I've seen a lot, and I have not heard really anybody talk about him. A guy with high motor, pretty much a very decent route running ability. Um, I, I recommend, I recommend, I recommend to go watch this guy from UNC, man. Um, at the end of the day, has a high potential to be a wide receiver one, in my opinion, if you go look at him. So, and yes, this is one of the guys that I believe Drake May was throwing to. So, yeah. Um, and, and, he, and, and he like 6'4 or something like that. Like, I believe so. I think he's like 6'4, 6'3. <laughs> Got speed, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I like I like him. He is six foot two. Okay, in record, he's still that's pretty tall for a receiver. You know, you want those type of guys with speed and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then another guy that I've been looking at, Troy Franklin from Oregon, um, Brian Thomas Jr., um, the guy that was next to Neighbors. I know everybody knows Malik Neighbors from LSU. He was on next to him. I like uh, Lad McConkey from Georgia, another guy there um, that I would like as well. So there, there's there's some guys out there that I have on my list, which obviously I'm going to keep adding to the list. Those are a couple of guys that I've been looking at. Um, but, yeah, you got swept on the San Francisco Giants, but the Sacramento Kings got 4-0 oh versus the Lakers. Hey, don't talk about my Lakers. We're good, man. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're fine. It's okay. It's a smoke screen. We're doing bad in the regular season, so when it comes to the playoffs, we just come out of anywhere. Um, but, yeah, although obviously those are a couple of things. Shout out to Lord Rochita. It's good to see you, man. Hope all's well. Tucker has to quick bobbling. The football's hey. don't need to work on securing catch, and I hope Devontae Adams helps him. I hope he gets better at the catching ability. Um, but, obviously, this draft, I don't know, just talking about the draft makes me so excited for the fucking draft, bro. It's, it's actually – it cannot come sooner, bro. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I will say that there's a lot of best-case scenarios. There's a lot of worst-case scenarios. But if there's one thing for sure, this Raider team is going to be better after the draft than it is right now. <sighs> Only time will tell, man. We got less than, I believe, less than 30 days, less than 25 days and then until the draft. So, you know. But, yeah, if you guys missed it, Jordan Meredith comes back to the Raiders. One-year deal. Michael Penix Jr. had his top 30 visit with the Las Vegas Raiders. And then Bo Nix just got announced that he will have a meeting with the Raiders tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow as in April 5th. So we will hear some things about maybe some talks of like, oh, they, they left the meeting pretty good. Oh, they enjoyed, you know, stuff like that, obviously. But yeah, anything am I missing, Tuan? Anything I'm missing? Anything in particular? There's some other guys that they're bringing in. Like I said, there's mm -hmm. you know Bo Nix, there's Michael Penix, and then they're bringing a bunch of guys offensive line wise. So that just tells me that they're not satisfied with you know who they who they have right now at O line. Um, and I'm and that just goes to exactly what I've been saying. Um, but yeah. I, I I'm excited about you know um, Telesco, you know I I feel like no matter what, you know I I've, I said it early I said I said it in a live like probably like a month or so ago I said we we there might be some things we may not like, but we're gonna like it and I think that's I think. Some of the moves that Telesco is going to do, we're not going to fully like them, just personally, but it, it's going to make sense and it's going to work for for our roster. He's been proven to build rosters, and he was he was handcuffed, you know, what I'm saying with the er, previous guys he had. Yeah. So just imagine <laughs> a, a Mark Davis that you know 
all the indicators of Mark Davis is like, hey, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get get as many coaches as you want. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you need a couple of more dollars. Okay, I'll throw this on top of this to make it work for y'all. Go ahead and do what you need to do. He didn't have that, you know what I'm saying, with his previous, you know what I'm saying, organization. So he he has people that are working with him. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he has too many handy, you know, handcuffs in regards to him building out this team. Now, he might have to have some stern conversations with Antonio Pierce because we know Antonio Pierce ain't no joke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Antonio Pierce also knows, hey, I got to let the GM do GM things and I'm going to handle the coaching side. So I like that about what we're doing. So positives all the way around yeah and people tend to forget the coaching staff we have now y'all we have some people that have brought been brought in that's going to help the these guys excel and reach their potential a hey, one in particular that i keep saying marvin lewis man if you guys don't know who marvin lewis is or live under a rock and don't know what he's capable of i would recommend highly recommend what he built when he was a coach himself one of the best if not in recent decades, defenses alone, right? And succeeded teams. I mean, was a decent succeeded team. Didn't win the Super Bowl, but I mean, obviously, he has some success, right? Um, so he's good with players. So that brings and also brings a head coach guy. You know, that's gonna help Antonio Pierce. Hey, hey, here's your time management. This is how he goes. Because at the end of the day, Antonio Pierce is learning too on that head coaching wise. But he understands the players. He was a player. He was a Super Bowl winning player. And he's going to bring that to all these players. And players are going to want to play with him. We already got people like all the all these all these Raider players, right? Coming out saying the same thing over and over again. Like, hey, Antonio Pierce is, lets me play. He makes me have fun. I feel alive. I feel free. I feel I feel like I could progress. And I, I feel like I could do everything. He understands me. Sometimes he pulls me to the side and asks me how I'm doing, helps my mental health. Those are important things. And when other people hear that, they're going to want to come. And at the end of the day, these draftees, I don't know if you heard a lot of them. They haven't really talked about Antonio Pierce specifically, except for like Jaden Daniels, obviously. But they have talked about players on this team like Max Crosby. There has been five of the, I would say, top 15 defensive linemen, best defensive linemen, that means defensive end slash D tackles, in the draft, talking highly about Max Crosby. When he got asked, hey, who do you who do you match your game from? Who would you love to play? We got people like Latu. If you guys don't know Latu, one of the best pass rushers in this this year's draft, UCLA um, led, I think, the full, uh, I think led the college scene in the most sacks. Um, arguably a first-round guy saying, hey, I would love to play with Max Crosby, man. I would love to do that. He's a guy that, you know, stuff like this is going to help the Raiders come draft night. And I believe the Raiders, like I said, my prediction is we will have two second-round picks that day. And I'm going to keep saying that. I believe we're going to have two second-round picks. Or I could see something happening now that we trade up into the late first <laughs> and still have a second. <laughs> so we will see what happens, obviously. But, you know. Shout out to everybody coming in, man. Let me just get to some of the comments before we 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 call it here. And you know, if I'm skipping anything, Twan, let me know, man. Shout out to everybody. Um, Jack Kenna, no, you know, I I rebranded the whole channel. Now it's just strictly Raiders and college, but stri strictly Raiders, pretty much. The West Coast is not gonna come back, but you know, you know, I, I'm still I'll still talk about some some baseball and football, man. And shout out to Apocalypse. If we hit on these picks, the franchise goes from being a dumpster fire to a contender in less than a year. Unheard of. Hey, unheard of for us because look at what we've been drafting. But I feel like this is the year that they have a high potential to hit. Right. Um, shout out to every chappy boss, whoever we draft that quarterback, we must 100 must develop and coach him the right way. That's a fact. Shout out to Circa, whether you love him or hate him, Mark is willing to spend big money to try to help the Raiders. The Spano family is notorious for penny pinging. <laughs> uh, but anything I'm missing, Tom, before we head on out here, anything in the Raider world, college world, anything? <sighs> See y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all next week. I, I, uh -huh. 
Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, that that that's it in regards to two for one. I I, I think I think I think we're good. Mm-hmm. Yep, it was a kind of a shorter one because you know there wasn't really much that happened besides those things that we talked about. Obviously, by next week we should have more news. Um, hopefully, and also we're getting one week closer next week to the NFL draft. So it's going to be very, very exciting to see what happens there. But at the end of the day, we appreciate everybody that came here. Twan, let them know where they can find you. Any videos you got coming up, shorts, anything? Yeah, let me let me say this. You guys, this week, I'm sorry, I you know, for 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 leaving y'all Tuesday and, and you know saying not having 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 anything for you guys. Life life happens. I'll just say it like that. Um, definitely keep me in your prayers um, as I continue to do that for you know for you guys. Um, I will be live. Um, I might be live Saturday. Stay tuned for that. Okay. okay. Stay tuned for that. If not, you'll see me next week, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursdays. You guys know I do the Tuesday, Thursdays. So Tuesdays, roughly around two 30, I usually go live. And then on Thursdays is the two for one nation podcast with my brother here. So you definitely do not want to miss that for all those that are on the SC Raiders talk. Hi, I'm Raider Twan. If you guys, if I have not introduced myself, come on over to Raider Twan and subscribe. I'm on my way to 500 subscribers. And if we hit that goal by week one, a lucky subscriber will win a pair of black air forces. That's right. You can win a pair of black air forces and all you have to do is do something for free. Subscribe. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, go ahead and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? The Raider Twan. And then those that are on the Raider Twan, Hey, quit playing with yourself and subscribe to my boy SC. Okay. That's how we do it over here. And hit the like button. Why? Because I like you. And shout out to everybody, man. Of course, I just dropped a video. Sorry, I didn't go live Tuesday. Usually me, two Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursdays, obviously, with Twan here, two for one nation podcast around this time. And on Tuesdays, for me, is different timing. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. I didn't do a live this week on Tuesday. Um, instead, I was like, hey, I can't just not drop no content. So right here, I put the link in the chat. I dropped a video, a very short video. It's not going to take long to watch. Um, I'm trying to learn some editing. So let me know. Even even besides commenting on what I talked about, please let me know how I did on the editing. I'm trying to get better at editing. So go look at that video. There's very short videos. There's two videos out there so far um, that I have made. So go check out both of them. They're both under five minutes. Um, one's two minutes and 42 seconds. The other one's like three minutes and two seconds or something. Go check them both out. But the most recent one, go check it out right there. It's in the link right there. I talked about trading up, the pros and cons, some other teams that did it and how they ended up. I talked about the Niners. I talked about the Rams with some editing, some visuals for you guys as well. So go go check it out, man, and share it out. Share it out to everybody, man. So I appreciate the, you guys, man. And um, I'm seeing everybody. Um, shout out to True Raider, man. Um, shout out to everybody coming in, man. Chappy Boss, new fan of the podcast. I just stumbled across it. Awesome dogs, good family here. You already know, man. Here, I'm all about positivity, man. After 2024, I was like, hey, you know, it's a, it's a new leaf. Raider content, supporting others, and just continue to do my part here. And you know, if just because you're new here, man, a little background. I'm I'm studying for this in college, so I just got, um, which actually. Um, I just got my associates and stuff like that, and communications and all those different things. I've been uh, I've been having that. So obviously now I'm making the jump to the bachelor's. Uh, obviously coming soon, hopefully uh, coming soon, coming soon. So that's another thing, communication. So I'm going to school for this stuff. So obviously I'm just not doing this just to do it. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to learn all these editing stuff and stuff like that. So hey, I appreciate you for liking it, man. Subscribe to both those, both in the description. Again, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern for Twan, 2.30, 3-ish, and Tuesdays. And, and Thursdays, obviously, we're both on the same podcast here, 2 for 1 Nation podcast, man. Thank you guys for being here. Blessed to see you guys and your families. Again, prayers up for anybody that needs it. I, I seen Brad Laps earlier. He said his mom had cancer and is fighting it right now. So prayers up to him. Prayers up to everybody, man, going through a tough time. Remember, tough time never lasts. But tough people do, and you guys are some tough people, man. And remember, life is short, so tell your loved ones you love them. And on that note, y'all.
This was your boy, SC Raiders Talk, a.k.a. your boy, Eric, and my boy, Raider Tuan in the building, home of the Brown Crackers and the congregation, man. And until next time, y'all, next Thursday for the both of us, and obviously Tuesday as well individually, we'll see you then. We are out. Peace. Peace.